Today we're making an evil pumpkin tree that measures six and a half feet tall. This spooky pumpkin tree will be the perfect addition to any Halloween decor setting. So join me for this amazing tutorial. To begin making our cursed pumpkin plant, we need a planting pot. You can use any size. I'm using a three gallon one. You could also use a bigger one and go with a five gallon, but I think this is a pretty good size. We're gonna get our PVC pipe. I've cut that to five feet tall. Again, you can go taller or you can go shorter, but I went with five feet tall. The PVC is a one inch in diameter, and we're gonna put it right in the middle and then fill it in with some quick setting cement. As you can see, we filled it up halfway with cement and it's been almost 24 hours and it's dry. So we used a little more than half a bag and we're ready to go to the next step. Before we continue with this tutorial, I wanted to show you all the first book that I've written. It's called Little Olive and the Wally Bat and it's rated for kids ages two to six years old. It follows a brave little olive that gets lost and is found by a very helpful brown bat. This is the first book I've ever written and I'm super excited about it. It's available on Amazon via paperback or Kindle. So if anyone wants to support me or read it to their kiddos, go check it out. The link is in the bio of the video, Little Olive and the Wally Bat on Amazon. Now let's get back to this amazing tutorial. So now that it's dry, we can start setting up the rest of it. We have here a cross T. This is gonna go right up here. Then we have two pieces each. These are five inches. We're gonna place right here for the shoulders. Next, we have these 90 degree angles over here, but this is a reducer. So this goes from an inch to three quarters of an inch. I'm gonna put all the links in the bio of the video, but we put it right here, just like that. Next, we have the arms. Now, because it's a plant, I wanted different size arms. So this one over here is 20 inches and this one here is 17 inches. And you can put it on whatever side you want. Next, we need the 45 degree PVC fittings that go right here on the elbow. And lastly, for the lower arms, we need two pieces. Again, make them different sizes so it has a different look to it. This one's 10 inches and this one's eight inches. And since this is the longer side, I'm gonna go with the longer piece here. But again, these don't have to be measured to the T. You can make them longer, shorter, to give your evil plant a different kind of look to it. This is the size I went, but you can definitely play around with it. Make sure you have it in the position that you want. Once you apply PVC cement, it'll stay like that. Remember, PVC glue dries in seconds, so as soon as you put it, make sure you have your other piece ready, push it in, and you're done. It should harden in like two to three seconds. Next, we need to make the roots and bark of the tree. So we're gonna be using some brown paper, but you could also use junk mail, old newspaper, paper towel. What we need to do is just crumple it. So I'm cutting a piece like this, and I'm just doing this like that. Just like that. Then I'm gonna grab some masking tape, and we're just going to wrap it like this. Once you're done wrapping it, we're gonna wrap it some more. So now what we have are things that'll look like this. This is gonna go at the base to make it look like the roots you see on the side of a tree that go into the ground. So we're gonna do several of these and we're going to attach it with masking tape to the PVC structure. So remember, this empty part is gonna be filled in with either mulch, peat moss, compost, soil, whatever you have lying around, you wanna fill it up over here so that it looks like it's planted. And these are going to go attached like this and they're gonna turn just like that. So we don't want these to hang out like this. We want them to be just like that because all of this is gonna be filled in nicely with soil. 
So we're going to do the same thing with this, like here. And then we're going to do another one just like that. We're going to keep on doing that till we get a nice shape going that represents the roots going into the ground. Make sure you put plenty of tape. All of this is going to be covered, so it doesn't matter if it looks gnarly. We just want it to keep it solid right there. So we're going to do several more just like that on the opposite side. Maybe another one over here. And then we're going to start doing the same thing over here with the actual main stem of it. So since we have a big piece coming here, I'm gonna put another piece lying flat like that, and then another one, so it'll give the bark these indentations and grooves. You're gonna see how I'm gonna do it right now. So once we're somewhat done with the trunk, we're going to use 16 gauge wire, and this wire is going to be used to make these sort of offshoots. So we're just gonna cut a piece of wire, we're gonna wrap it around the PVC, and then, like we've done the rest of the trunk, we're gonna get some paper, some newspaper, we're gonna wrap it around the wire, and then wrap it with some masking tape like we did here. The reason why we put the wire on the inside is that later, if you want to change the shape, you can easily do it because you have that wire inside. So definitely love this about it. We're going to put them in various different places to give it maybe spikes or little offshoots, little branches coming here and there, but that's how we're going to do it. So as you can see, I already started on his hand. What we're gonna do with the other one is drill a couple of holes into its the end of the arm by the wrist, and then we can put the wire through it. That way it's a little bit steadier and it holds in really nicely. You could also just wrap the wire around the wrist area, but I just think it's better when you do the holes and it'll hold it in there nicely. So we need five wires for the five fingers and then we're going to wrap it, super simple. It's been wrapped completely and I use that brown paper or you could just choose newspapers. We're wrapping it with masking tape and since there's wire inside of it we can adjust the fingers however we want. You can make the fingers any size and put them in any shape. It's super simple. 
As you can see, I have covered everything with masking tape and brown paper. I could have added a few more spikes here and there, but I think that looks good for right now. Next, we're going to use a paper mache technique using tight bond wood glue and paper towels. I've not used this method before, but I saw some reviews online that it's pretty good, so we're gonna go with that. Make sure the area you're working in is completely covered because this is gonna be messy, this is gonna be tedious. So let's not get it on the floor or on ourselves. Make sure you wear something that you don't mind getting dirty. And the fingers, I'm going to reposition them as I'm putting on the paper mache, but it's looking good so far. Let's get into it. For our paper mache glue, we need Type Bond Premium Wood Glue. We need a roll of paper towels, a small mixing container, and a brush. Make sure you have something on the ground to protect from the falling glue. And we're going to start brushing the glue onto the paper towel and then wrapping it around the tree. Let's get going. So I wanted to talk about the final color that we put on this. As you can see, there's greens and some grays mixed in there. And it's super simple to do. We're gonna paint the entire tree with a dark brown. Pick any shade of dark brown. Then we're gonna get some lighter brown. And here and there, we're gonna mix in some lighter brown just to give a variation. But to get this nice green effect, we get a small brush and then we get our paint sample. These are $4 at Lowe's. These are super good when you just have a small amount of area to paint and you can get this in any color. We'll gently dip it into the paint and then ever so lightly go like this. You don't wanna paint in the green, no, no. You just wanna hit the high point. So I call it feather painting. You're just simply going like this, very, very lightly on various different areas so that the green can adhere to the veiny areas, to the high points of this tree and you do it to the entire thing and it'll give it that nice green. Then to finish it off, you can use a light gray or a gray that's been mixed with a little drop of green just to give it some more whitish or lightish high points. Again, just ever so gently and that's how you do it. So we're basically done with the painting of this. And now we gotta move on to finishing the root system and to putting on the pumpkin head. To finish off the pumpkin tree, we need to get cardboard. I'm just using a cardboard box and ripping it into smaller pieces. And we're putting this on the base. The reason we're doing this is because we're gonna use expanding foam to fill in the areas. Originally, I was gonna use real soil, but I'm like, this plant is going inside, this is a fake tree, so let's just use expanding foam, paint it brown or spray paint it, and then put fake moss on top of it to make it look like it's really planted and growing. So by putting the cardboard in, we don't have to use as much expanding foam. This will probably take half a bottle versus if we don't have the cardboard, it'll take one, maybe two bottles to fill up. So let's, let's put some expanding foam. To finish our pumpkin tree, we need to carve 
a jack-o'-lantern. Now these pumpkins are sold at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. I get all my pumpkins from Michael's. They're foam pumpkins and they can be carved. I'm going to make a YouTube tutorial and link it hopefully somewhere up here where it shows you how I carve these. Super simple to do, you need a hot knife and they're super fun. I have so many different variations of a jack-o'-lantern. So we need to make a hole in the bottom as you can see and we need to cut a PVC. And the PVC is gonna determine the size, I mean, is however tall your jack-o'-lantern is. So this is a one inch diameter PVC. And just like that, it goes over it. And now I need to put in a battery operated candle or battery operated LED light on the inside so it shines through. But this is basically it, this is how we're doing it. So I'm super excited, we're almost done with it. So for a final detail, we're going to stick dried leaves. Now you can use green leaves and they'll eventually dry, but I'm just using dried leaves that I have in my yard. To make sure that they stay where I want them to be, I'm going to drill a simple hole, just like that. Then I'm going to put hot glue into that hole, just like that. Then we're going to stick our leaf right into the hole just like that. And then we're done. Originally, I had said to just make one hole, but I realized that I needed to make two holes. One for the candle, which is this one, and then one for the one inch diameter PVC pipe that's gonna hold it up. So I grabbed these LED uh, battery operated candles. They have a flickering effect, which is super awesome. I'm gonna link them below. You make a hole and then you put it in there just like that and this one's going to be where the neck pipe goes in. So normally when I do this like this, I'll put hot glue around the edge, all around the edge till it freezes like this. And then when you need to change the batteries, you just open the battery case right here and change the batteries. Normally I only change the batteries maybe once during the season and that's it. They last a long time and they're on timers and you have a little remote for these batteries so they can turn on and off whenever you need them to.